Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and as you can tell from the countdown clock, the lesson is about to get started. In case you're new with this, there's a few things I'd like to show you to help you throughout the lesson. Over the last several weeks, we've been focused on specific topics, and so there have been other questions that came up, whether they were in your emails or surveys or even in the live chat, that just didn't quite really fit into what we were talking about in that lesson, but I felt like everyone would benefit from the answers. So today's our chance. We're going to clear house. We're going to get to all of the questions that, you, that you've had that just didn't quite really have a home anywhere else. So we'll tick through as many of those as possible. If you've got additional questions, throw them in the live chat. We'll try to get through all of the stuff that we can today before we're back on track with a focused topic in the next lesson. These lessons are always guided and shaped by your questions. And if you're live with us today, there's a couple different ways you can do that. One is in the public live chat and the other is the Ask Jamin a Question button where you can ask me a question privately and I won't share your identity in case you're afraid that your question is stupid. But it's not. If you're in the archives though, then just open up the survey at the end of that. There's a place where you can ask your question. I will say I frequently get questions from students in the archives watching a lesson from six months ago, and I have no idea what they're talking about. So please try to be as specific as possible. If you're watching this at LearnPianoLive.com, there should be a PDF and an MP3 button right next to this video. The PDF will often have additional video links inside so you can get more in-depth instruction on each of the topics. And if you're the kind of person who likes to print out the PDF so you can make the same notes on your physical version as I'm making during the lesson, now would be the time to do that. The MP3 is just a play along track so you can practice more after the lesson. If these live lessons start feeling random or meandering, it's because they are on purpose. So if you're the kind of person who wants classical training with a step-by-step -step method, then you're going to want to check out Kloppel Academy on the website. It's included in your live lesson subscription, so you can do both or either. And the upper levels are seriously hard work, but it's going to take you all the way from ground zero all the way up to being ready to enter any major music college as a piano major in classical or jazz. And thankfully, I think that's about all we need to cover before the lesson. So if you'd stick around afterwards and fill out the survey, I would love your feedback. But for now, let's have some fun and make some music. Welcome back to LearnPianoLive.com. My name is Jamin, and this is Kendra. Guess what? What? I got to go, oh, actually, this is for the Batman video from uh -huh. the kids' lesson, but mm -hmm. I got to go see the bats at the oh, yes. Yellow Bat mm -hmm. Foundation. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. It's like the thousands of bats all coming out at once or yeah. whatever. I know it really was irre irrelevant to the lesson. But, yeah, um, whatever. I thought that was pretty cool. Today's the so. perfect day for it. It's an Ask Me Anything. So we're just going to go through. I got my... Uh, I'm done, Bell. I'm going to go as quickly as I can. And uh, we've got some questions from uh, previous lessons and previous chats and all. But if you're live right now, you can go ahead and throw your questions in as well. But uh, we'll just try to get through as many of these things as possible because next week we start our new song, which is um, uh, Change the World. Have you heard that one before? I so. don't know. So I it's mean, I will fun. though. I'll hear it's it for cool. the next six weeks, which will be yeah. great. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. Question number one, hit me. What can I do to increase my finger flexibility? Right. Uh, okay. So then, uh, the, uh, the the honest answer to this is a lot of playing. Uh, the more you play, the more you'll run into the problems, and once you run into the problems, you can fix them. I know you were to uh, bad habits. That's great. Uh, so if you're going through a program, any like method books or um, Kloppel Academy or any of that stuff, uh, then that's going to give you little hints about um, how to make sure that you can uh, avoid making any bad what are those called habits yes uh some of the biggest things are that uh, you want to make sure that you're not trailing fingers over like that that's the slowest way to move through the piano actually you want to throw the keys in here so they can see my uh, fingers on here so then something oh you got the intro going there we go um so stuff like this is usually a problem so um you don't need more flexible fingers. You just need better habits in most cases. Um, so trying to tuck your thumb under, using your thumb, uh, since it goes in a direction the rest of your fingers don't go, these can all go up, up and down like that. This is the only one that can go under. So anytime you need to move laterally, then making sure that your thumb is involved in that. And then pretty much your pinky's a dead end. If you ever get up 
to your pinky, then there's not much hope of like trying to cross under your under your pinky is really difficult. Uh, so once you get up to there, you know you end up doing stuff like that. So th just know that your pinky is a dead end. Uh, you can cross under pretty much anything else, and any other movement across should include your thumb. And other than that, it's just really specific case by case. This is where like an, a teacher actually does come in handy. Usually, um, <laughs> I, most of the stuff you you need to learn you can learn on YouTube or whatever. I'm not really big on um, having to have a teacher necessarily in weekly lessons and all that stuff. But um, yeah, d in this case, you know your teacher will see things like that that you can fix. But if you're a student here, which you, the person who asked the question is, um, then you can just send in your videos and then, you know, I'll, I'll fix all that stuff as we go. That was you know, a long answer. Sorry. That, no, that was great. I, wait, can I continue? Oh, on that sure. For a so it, that's interesting because I started t taking lessons from you like six years ago or okay. six and a half years ago or something like that. I know okay. it's crazy. Um, and I, I remember we started out with I was learning chords so mm -hmm. I could sing along right. to the piano. Yeah. And so I didn't learn the thumb under the other yeah. fingers until I took Klopfel Academy. Yeah. Which was super helpful. <laughs> Be relatively recently. Yes. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now I'm on level three. Yeah. Way to go. Cool. That's, that's really tough. A lot of people haven't made it to level three. That was depressing to a lot of people just now. Sorry. <laughs> If you're on level two or one, just song. keep working. She played for a bunch of years before she even started Clap Academy, so she cheated. So anyway, go yes. ahead. Next question. Okay. The, um, how do I know if my kid is talented enough to make taking lessons worth it? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know if my kids are talented enough um, to s know if it's worth it to take lessons, except well, I could teach them, I guess it's worth it. So they're free here. But other than that, I don't know. I, it really depends on your expectations out of the whole thing. So if we, again, if we treat this like um, speaking a language, like how do I know if my kid is talented enough to um, learn Chinese? Well, probably they are. Most kids are. It would take a, an especially slow child to not be able to pick up most any language. The question is, um, do they like Chinese? Is there any place for them to show that skill off or to use that skill? Um, and then, you know, some people are just really great at learning languages. So like, are they super talented at it? Uh, I, there's not any way to know until you get a lot into it. So you wouldn't know until you learn your, you know, first two or three or four languages. And then you're like, wow, this guy's really good at learning languages. But how do you know in the first few months, I, I have no idea. So I guess if you can afford it, um, then you can start some lessons and they will learn something if they've got a teacher that they like um, and it's it's any fun for them at all. But yeah, at the beginning, that's just a, that's not a real question. Is my kid talented enough? Like, and I've got, I've got parents who ask me this, like literally in the first lesson, they'll come for like a free trial lesson. I'm like, here's the policies and stuff. I'll get like 10 minutes with them. And they'll be like, so what do you think? Is my kid talented enough? I'm like, Man, we're like years, at least months away from having any idea if they're talented enough to be great. But uh, everyone can learn something. So, yeah, if you can afford it, throw, throw them in. Let them try it for a little while. Well, yeah, and I hardly oh. knew anything on piano oh, when I first yes. started. I it knew... turns out you're talented. So. Oh, thank you. I think we're only six years into it, but you're great. Thank you're you. You're great. You're great. Ah, thanks. Next question. I've learned so much. Okay. Um. In your opinion, what's the best piano method book? Yeah, honestly, I hate them all. Uh, they're all about the same. Uh, it's it's Klopfel Academy. Honestly, uh, it's, it's I put that Wait, together. Hang on. Should I throw in the? Uh, um, <laughs> yes, the... go ahead. <laughs> Did it not work? I didn't hear it. Oh, I turned it all the way down. <gasps> so you couldn't do it. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, now yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. All right. There you go. There we go. So it's um, I put a lot of that stuff together just because I hate all of the method books. And as it turns out, the more I made it, the more I hate it because you just have to include a lot of really, really boring stuff. So um, my method is always like, what what is the student interested in learning? Let's do that stuff first in the same way that um, like learning a language. You got to write those stupid Spanish books that t teach you about the biblioteca and all the other stuff that you're never, ever going to use in real life. So, like, if I was going to a Spanish teacher, I would hope they'd be like, well, you seem really into music. Let's talk about music and, you know, do some of that stuff in Spanish. Or, like, where where are the other people that you know that speak Spanish? What would you be likely to talk with them about? Let's learn that stuff first because that's the most usable. And, of course, a book can't do that because it's, it's a very personal thing so about what you're going to be interested in most. So my, my favorite method is... Find a teacher who's going to teach you the stuff that you enjoy playing. But uh, as far as books are concerned, I don't know. There's like five really fine, great ones out there. Faber and Alfred and a Bastion and a bunch of other guys I haven't 
mentioned. So, yeah, whatever. I don't know. Pick one. Go with it. If you're learning from it, if you like it, stick with it. That's the best teacher you could have. Next. Um, how important is it to get weighted keys when I buy a keyboard? I'm afraid to answer this one, but I get it all the time. Uh, because... It's uh, really, really super, super important if you're planning on playing on weighted keys a lot. And at this point, you don't have any idea if you are. It's kind of back to like the talented thing. Um, so uh, if you practice exclusively on non-weighted keys, then um, going to a piano or a weighted keyboard is significantly different. The opposite is not really that much true. If you practice on weighted keys, you can uh, play very similarly or at least a lot easier um, on non-weighted keys so in that aspect yeah it's really super important because um if you don't if you're not playing on weighted keys you're not playing on a real keyboard okay so then having said that uh weighted keys are usually a lot more expensive than non-weighted keys um so it doesn't really matter that much. If you're buying your first piano, then it doesn't really matter that much. But if it were me, I think I would prefer like a really cheap upright piano that was like a piano, piano, piano uh, that I could beat up and, and play wrong and, and um, stuff and mess with, you know, like get in there and like try to tune it myself and like actually really get into the, the piano a whole lot um, than have... A cheap keyboard? Nope. Uh -uh. No, I'm going to say the opposite of that then, too, because for like, especially for kids, like having all those buttons and stuff where you can like change the sounds and stuff, kids get a lot more practice time in if they can like practice it. Oh, what does my sound, so, sound, what does my song sound like as a saxophone? What does it sound like as a trumpet? What does it sound like with this thing? I don't even know how to pronounce that instrument. What is that instrument? And they end up learning what the instrument is and what it sounds like because they've got all those extra special keys. So at that point, no, it's not, it's stupid to buy a weighted keyboard that only has a piano sound on it if they're going to get in a whole lot more practice time with um, a non-weighted keyboard that has a bunch of extra sounds and beats and really cool, fun stuff like that. So whatever motivates the most practice is the right keyboard to have. But I could see how people would make a strong argument for weighted keys. Okay, the next one is, I feel like I hit a wall. Oh, I'm sorry. I started that all wrong. I'm sorry. For everybody else, weighted keys is when you press down each key, does it feel like an actual piano or does it just like press down like a piece of plastic? Is it heavy to press down? That's what weighted keys is. Sorry. Okay. I feel like I hit a wall on most songs and some part of it is too difficult. What am I doing wrong? Uh, okay. So for this one, uh, that is going to be true for almost every difficult. Yes. Every difficult, everything. Uh, so then that's that's a really common thing is that you'll get the first 80 to 90 percent of the song down and then uh, the last, you know, 10 percent, 5 percent, 20 percent, whatever is left um, is just takes way longer than the, the whole rest of the song did. And so it'll feel like you, you just hit a wall when the truth is the rest of it was was not really even the wall was all there was. The rest was just leading up to the wall. And finally, you've like hit the part where it requires practice. So yes, it's extremely common that the last tiny little chunk of a song will be will take the most amount of time. Yes, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I feel like over the past few years, I've gotten mm -hmm. a lot better at reading chords. And now mm -hmm. I'm starting to try and do sheet music a little oh, more. Yeah, okay. And so when I did my jazz piece for Clawful mm -hmm. Academy, which I did <laughs> take the A train, it was really cool. Um, okay. It took me forever because yeah. I'm terrible at sight reading. So I had to write out the letters yeah. under Ooh. the notes. Yeah. But yeah. I eventually learned it. Yeah. So, okay. And, yeah. And the more yeah. you do with that, the, the easier that yes. all becomes. Yeah. But it, whatever whatever song you're practicing, there's going to be there's some part of the song that's hardest, and you won't know it until you get to it. In a lot of cases, so practice all the way through, and when you hit that last chunk, that just treat that like that was the song, and everything else that you practice was just finding out what the song actually was. That little chunk, that's the song, that's the part you need to practice. It's totally normal. But if you got a teacher, or if um, you're you take lessons, at learn piano live, then submit a video of yourself playing that, and then each little tiny little chunk of it that you learn. You learn one more note and one more note. And as you learn just a little tiny bit more, um, then uh, hopefully you get some encouragement along the way and you'll eventually be able to push all the way through. Um, the next question is, is This will be our, oh. our last question yes. too before we uh, move on to the, the intermediate version of an Ask Me Anything, whatever that means. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. Is there any advice you have for me heading into Colossal Academy? 
Uh, yes, yes. And I, um, it's actually, there's a, a video at the beginning of Clapple Academy that um, it should be the, um, you should have to watch it before he, you enter the, that thing that we won't name again. Um, but uh, yeah, so if, if you just watch that video, it has all my advice for, uh, for you. I will restate what I can remember of that. Kendra, what do you think going into Cloud Academy? Now you're on level three and you did, just did a jazz piece. Uh, what is What would your advice be for somebody going into Cloud Academy? My advice? Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. I'm going to just say teacher stuff. What do you think as, as a person well, who's actually gotten to level three? Um, okay, so I didn't really know what to expect going into it. Mm -hmm. I, I knew it was a more traditional yeah. way of learning, which that was right. And I did learn a lot even on level one. Like okay. I had been taking from you for a few years mm -hmm. already. <laughs> and I and I learned stuff that I didn't know. And yeah. that was really cool. Like I learned what Moonlight Sonata was. Yeah. I learned a lot of new music and new piano tips. So what's your advice though? Uh, Someone's going into work it. Work hard on it. Um, <laughs> okay. It'll take some hard work. It's easier yeah. at first, but it gets more difficult, and that's really great when you when you feel or when you finish it, you'll feel really accomplished. Yeah, that's true. That's that's for sure. And don't give up. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. Give up. Don't give up. And yeah. Uh, yeah, especially like level one is usually um, pretty easy with a couple little hard chunks. Two is like usually for most people, even if you've been playing piano before, it's usually you know easy but a couple more hard chunks and then once you get into level three then it seems like the whole world just explodes and you've got a, a ton of things to do especially adding in all the jazz stuff that's when we we add in the jazz stuff is on level three so yeah i guess pretty crazy uh but uh if you stick with it level one level two and you in your mind tell yourself that you should take about a year per level uh that's like the the average for like if it was a kid was going through it a 12 or 13 year old kid was going through it um about a year per level so um don't expect to just blow through it in a couple weeks like you all do anyway i know i know you're like yeah whatever this is only 20 pages how hard could it be it could be hard. Uh, but uh, yeah, jump in and uh, take it one little chunk at a time. Submit a lot of videos, and uh, I'm sure you'll you'll do fine. But uh, the, oh, the other thing that I always recommend, I'm glad I remembered this one, is um, start with the the pieces that you're supposed to play because that's always the hardest part. And so everyone like always does the vocabulary and all the theory and all the fun stuff first. And then they're like, all right, now I'll, I'll do my repertoire piece. But they haven't been practicing it the whole time. And that thing's going to take you like three or four or five months to finally put together. Um, so if you wait a couple months to do that as you're ticking off the other stuff in the level, then it's just a big, long nothing burger of not accomplishing anything until you finally uh, do that. So start that on day one to go to your repertoire, start something on your song. And then after you've gotten a little ways through it, start taking off the vocabulary and the composers and all the other stuff that you learned. All right. Well, it's time for us to say goodbye to all of the freeloaders watching the YouTube and Twitch uh, streams. But uh, we'll continue the AMA in just a minute. All right, it's time to transition into the intermediate portion of the lesson. So sadly, the lesson preview has come to an end, and it's time to say goodbye to everyone watching the free streams. Of course, paying subscribers at LearnPianoLive.com can continue watching this lesson and several hundred others like it in the archives. So come on over and check us out. And if you like what you saw, at least like and subscribe, and then tell your friends to head on over to LearnPianoLive.com to start enjoying this journey with us.